Martin, nice to see you again. I'm excited to see what you guys have been up to this week and where you've been exploring. A lot of you, you're all from different places, so it'd be quite interesting to see what you've picked up from all of the different areas. So I'm quite excited to see all of that work when we submit it. I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. But yeah, I'm just really excited about this week because this week is we're doing cyanotype. So it's a lot of, there's a bit of prep this week. So you've got to prep the bottles and then leave them for 24 hours. So I'll get going and show you what to do first. So let's go. Hi hey everyone. So this is the cyanotype. So I've got some gloves on, as you can see here. So you will need an adult to help with this part and you will need some gloves. So what you do for this bit, let's just move this over to the side, is I've already put my solution in here, but what you will do is I would recommend using a jug that's got some sort of funnel on the end of it there. And then you will take this off and fill it up in the kitchen sink or bathroom sink or something, just and then filling it up into the spout here. So that will mix the solution together and then you will need to shake them up. So if you do that and then shake them both up at the same time, then you need to, so shake it quite well, then you need to leave it to mix together for 24 hours. So I would recommend giving it a couple of shakes in that time, but you definitely need some gloves on and you'll definitely need some help with this part. So just be careful of that. And as I say, this will help to control it. So just use a jug or something like that and try and do it in as dark a space as possible. Obviously not in the dark, like in the pitch black, but with just no lighting on or the or when the sun's coming in the window because it can overexpose this. Um, and then you won't be able to use, it won't come out properly. So I'll show you what to do next after this part. So again, so you fill this up, shake it about, and then leave it for 24 hours and then give it a really good shake before you're going to use it. So I'll show you the next part. So for this next part, you should have one of these and a small little container like this. So you'll have left this for 24 hours and then what you need to do is mix equal parts of both together. So what I've got here is just a little reusable beaker so I'm going to fill this I've put a little line on mine here so that I know where I'm filling up to so you would tend to do this part in a, as dark a space as possible again with no lights on or with no sunlight coming in so it doesn't need to be pitch black in the room it just needs you don't need want to be getting any light exposure in there because it will spoil the solution so what we do so I'm just going to give this another little shake before I use it. And then I'm going to fill it up to the line. So that's that one. So then once I've filled, so that's this one I've put in. So I'll just move that over to the side. And then I'm going to put that in there. Then part here. So you want equal parts, part A and part B. And put those over to the side. Then mix them together. So again, you'll need gloves for this part. So just, just to be careful, um, it does give you instructions if, if you get it on your skin or anything on the back of the... And it's not too bad, but you really need to wear gloves and you really should get an adult's assistance with this. So then you mix this really well together. And you would do this part again in a darkened room. I'm showing you in a light room here because I need to for video purposes, because I cannot show you in the pitch black. So then you will get your dab here and spread it across the paper. And this oh. and 
Now it's alright if your paper starts to roll up because you'll be able to flatten it out later. But this is just what happens when paper gets wet. So then you will continue doing a lot of the sheets of paper. So you've got some paper inside your little week three cyanotype packs. So that's the paper you should use for this for that part. And then you will leave that off to the side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go off camera and finish using the rest of my solution before and turn off the lights so that I can so that it's not getting an exposure. And then I'll get back to you after that part. Hello. So it's the next day and I've all my cyanotype paper is prepped in my little studio room. It's really dark in there. So I don't know if you can see, it's laid out on the floor. And I've got a envelope there ready to pop it all into because we don't want it to, in this part of my studio, it's really light. So we don't want to expose the paper to any lightness until we need to use it. So the idea with cyanotype is it will expose with sunlight and in the in light so we don't want to expose it to any lightness so you need to leave when you've prepped your paper you need to leave it in a dark space to dry it doesn't take that long especially on the smaller pieces of paper it only really takes a few hours but you are supposed to leave it for 24 hours so just keep that in mind when you're doing it so i'm going to prep my stuff and put it in the um envelopes and then get ready to start printing so that's quite exciting it's been snowing this morning but it's still really sunny um so if you can see out the window there oh it's a bit too bright there um so yeah it's all right to do it even if it's been snowy and stuff just just lay something down um yeah so i'm gonna get all of my paper prepped and then we'll move on to the next part Hello again. So, I've got my cyanotype paper envelope and inside, I'll just quickly show you that. So I've got my cyanotype paper that is prepped and ready to go. I've also, because I've got quite a lot, I've used just an old Amazon um, parcel because we need the envelope or whatever we're storing it in to not let any sunlight in. And this is really thick cardboard, so it won't let anything in. These are really good envelopes, the ones I've sent you as well, so they shouldn't let much light in. So don't, So you feel free to use those. Um, the next thing we'll need before we go printing is you've got, you should have one of these plastic sleeves in there. And what we'll do is this will keep it all nice and flat. So you'll put a piece of paper inside there, then you'll put whatever you want into print either inside or on top of that and it will keep it nice and flat and a bit more sturdy so you can hold it down in the edges too if you want to do a couple at the same time after you've done your first one you can use like a standard plastic wallet too they're quite good It'll just keep it all nice and flat on the floor i've also got some old frames because i often collect old frames because they come in for a lot of uses and um, this is just a bit of old artwork that I've done so but good old frames they will fray so you can lay those on top you can take them apart obviously take the back off and then the glass if you put the paper underneath it then glass or perspex a lot of new frames have perspex in the front these ones are glass um, but they've got perspex on the front so you can just lay everything flat and it will help you to expose to the sun again this one this is another glass one though but this is quite a big piece so you could put the paper underneath then put your object and then put the glass on top but i just wanted to show you that this is possible too so if you've got any old frames or anything these are really good for cyanotype but just obviously be really careful if you are going to use them and they've got glass inside them as i said new ones have got perspex so that's not too bad um but these will work just fine to do it so i just wanted to show you that so let's get start printing Hello again. So I just thought I'd show you how to do it before we go outside and start doing it outside. So I'm just going to, this piece of paper is probably being exposed now, so probably won't be. I'll try using it though. But what we basically do is we get our sheet of paper. So again, you would do this in the dark, but I can't do it in the dark at the moment to show you, obviously. And then you would take your piece of paper, then you take something with an interesting silhouette like a leaf it's the perfect size actually isn't it 
um, and then so you can just expose by taking it outside and leaving it on top but obviously if it's a little bit windy which it is at this time of year then it's good to have something like this so then you would that'll keep it nice and flat so when you're outside as well you can get something like a stone etc to put on the edges to keep it nice and flat so you can do that with your sheet or again if you've got access to an old frame or something i've just taken the little bits off the back of this um, because obviously glass or perspex is a little bit heavier than that would be so then you would just do that and then again that then you'll expose it outside so with it being a bit so they say for at least five minutes but on a cloudy day you could just keep an eye on it basically what you're doing you want him to see this change color so this green bit will change will go lighter and lighter and you can check it by just lifting up the leaf and it will go it'll be underneath the leaf should be slightly different color and then that you know when you're ready then so i'll show you some examples when we're outside but i just wanted to show you how to load it up before we go out
going to take this out. Give it a little rinse. Conserve water, what I'm going to do is leave them face down in there. So just before I show you what I've been up to, I just wanted to say that my, you can probably tell from my videos they filmed over a few days and there was different weather conditions in that time. Some days it was really cloudy, some days it was really sunny and I was making the most of the sun. As soon as it was as soon as it was sunny, I was straight out into the garden <laughs> or in the car park of my studio. So just keep that in mind. It's quite fun actually to gather all your stuff and quickly get out when it's sun. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind while you're doing it. So that, that will change your exposure times. So some, t some will need five minutes and you'll tell whether it be going a coppery colour and some will need half an hour, etc. So if you're just sat in the garden or anything anyway, then it's good to just have doubt, just keep an eye on it. Um, but yeah, I'll show you what I've been up to. So I just wanted to show you some of the stuff that I've been doing. It's all been a bit of experimentation and it's been really fun. So I hope you have fun with it too. Um, I don't know if you can tell what this is. So this is just a stencil that I had cut out already. So I just laid that on top of it and then I don't know what's happened to this bit actually, but then put some badges on top of it. Um, and can you see safety pins? They've come out really nicely. So you can use any general household object to try and put it on top. They just want to be a little bit flat um, so that you don't get shadows. But can you see, I think this is where the shadows come in on this one. But I really like it. it kind of uh, the circles look really lunar, which I love. There's another stencil I already had with some safety pins around it again. Um, so mine are a bit crinkly, as you can see, and I'll show you how to flatten them in a bit. Um, so I had some I in some other work I do. I cut out stencils and do some guerrilla art on the street. Um, and so these are a lot of I had a, I've got a lot of letters cut out and these are out of mylar plastic and I laid them on top so can you see they're a bit translucent so they've just come out which I quite like again some more letters that I already had and I put those on top so the reason why these haven't come through all white is because they're a little bit they were a little bit translucent these ones obviously weren't as much but these have got they've not come out as clear because of 
them not being um, fully blocked out. I love this one. It reminds me of a snooker table or a pool table. But also kind of lunary again. This is a leaf. Which I quite like the shape of actually. Another little leaf. This one's a leaf. I think this one could do with another little wash again. As you wash them, then you leave them and they will dry and then some of them might not come out as white as you would like. So just try and give them a wash again and they might come out white a bit whiter. It's just when this hasn't completely gone off. I have found laying them in, laying them face down in the water does help to get all of the, like all of the chemicals off of it. This, I love this one. This is just a, a um, metal plate that I found lying around in the garden. So anything that you find laying around in the garden or anything, try experimenting with that. Because I just really love the way that one's come out. Some forks and spoons. I really like the way this one's come out as well. I like how the, the shadow has made these come really long. Some more leaves in a frame. This one I think could do with another little rinse as well. But I just wanted to, I quite like I quite like the way that one's quite ghostly. Another one. This one I actually tried the reason it's like this is because I, I was rubbing it. And when you rub it, this is kind of what happens. So just don't rub too hard. It's this um watercolour paper that it's on. It it's meant to stick the paint on. So when that when you rub it, it just goes like that. So just be careful when you're using the watercolour. These are some various leaves. And I love this one. I love the way that this has come out. And this one too. It's really faint. But all this is, is just some weeds from the garden that I've just laid on top of it. And I like how it's a bit underexposed. I don't know. I just really like that one. And this one. So most of my favourites are just weeds and leaves that I found laying around in the garden so I've just laid them on top of each other and I love the little shadows and everything these ones have come out really nicely I don't know if you can see here I was desperately hunting for a feather and I just could not find one anywhere so I just drew one and then it's not just on a plastic wallet and all I used is a permanent marker and yeah I just drew one and put it on top and then put the cyanotype inside and then it, it's come out really, really nicely. So if you've got any plastic wallets, then really try that. It's really good. This one again as well. I traced this. I just found a picture of a dragonfly and drew over the top of it and then it's come out lovely. So yeah, I just wanted to show you a few of the things that I've got. I really hope you have fun experimenting with yours. And just keep it open. You can use nuts and bolts, uh, scissors, anything that's a little bit flat. It's got a bit of shape to it. It's got a really nice silhouette. That Think of last week when you were look, out looking for shadows and silhouettes. So yeah, it's just really nice. So I'll show you what we're to do next. So you've done quite a lot over the last three weeks. And I just wanted to show you how to submit everything for the exhibition. So you can either use your camera for this, because remember this got an SD card in it and you can take that out and put it into a computer if you've got access. Or, so you could take the photographs of that, of your work, using the SD card, just take the film out, take your photographs and submit them to the email. And I'll put the email address at the end for you to submit the work to. Or you can use a smartphone camera and then that'll just directly upload to there. So you would just... So you've got some paper again in your packs and you can just lay stuff out and take a photograph. You can also take apart your little books. So you can show them in situ. You can photograph them nicely. Now using your new skills or as well you can take them apart. And these will just go back together really easily again. Not coming apart easily though. <laughs> um, yeah, and then just take a photograph of it this way too. So then you get 
all of the obviously the light's shining on mine at the moment but i'm trying to show you for the camera so yeah it would just be really good so it would be nice to get some photographs of your photographs too because these are really nice in themselves just to have a nice printed thing so you could put them out and you could lay them out in an interesting way and then photograph them on a the background as so um, you can put your sign types you could just put a nice interesting background down and photograph them frame them well Individ to try to do them individually not don't try to get everything in at once we want to be able to see close-ups of the things because we want to be able to show all of the amazing work that you guys have been doing so oh and that orange really makes that pop i take back what i said about all the orange paper from the last couple of weeks so there we are so yeah as i say you can use a smartphone camera and send that directly or use this camera try it with this one first if you and then take your sim your sd card out if you and then plug it into the computer if you've got access remember you've got your adapter too so yeah it'd be really nice to get photographs of, of your books so take a picture of your journal i would love really like to see how they've come out your zines in situ so like this then opening them up and showing them inside but yeah, we just really want to get a flavour of all of the things you've been up to because you've done quite a lot over the last three weeks. So I'm really excited to see all of the work. So yeah. Hello. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for taking part in all of this. It's been so great. I've really enjoyed doing it all. So I hope you've all enjoyed doing it too. It's been a brilliant project and I'm just really excited to see all of your work. I'm really looking forward to seeing this online exhibition coming together. So I will put the email address that you're sending all of the work to at the end of the project and that's to Jane. And Jane's been our lovely project manager for this and I'd just like to give a little shout out to say thank you Jane for everything and thank you to the whole Blue Cabin team and everybody else that made this project possible. It's been lovely and I really just hope to see all of the work. I'm really, really excited to see what you've all been doing. So yes, this is bye for now. And yeah, I look forward to seeing your work soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.